Welcome everyone to the next episode of building this reactor. Now you remember in the last episode we left off with the auger not fitting in the barrel as you just saw there. So I started off by trimming it off with a plasma torch and I will say you know my goal one of the biggest goals of this reactor is for it to be easily replicatable you know but I will say you could do this with an angle grinder, but I personally would say a plasma torch is absolutely mandatory for this type of stuff because, you know, even if you do take the time to do this with an angle grinder, you know, you'll make an absolute mess for one. It'll take forever. It'll be a pain. And it will never really come out, you know, really, um, really all that well. You know, you see even with this plasma torch, it, it, it came out quite rough. So I had a lot of grinding to do even after I cut it out. But... You see, I did get it to fit in there, you know, because I measured the width based on the top of the barrel, right? So by nature, it would fit in there because the lid of the barrel is already the perfect diameter. So anyways, I lost the footage, but I ground down a lot of the rough edges on this thing. Uh, I still need to go over it with a flap disc, but I'll do that a little bit later down the line. But you see now it's a lot more uh, polished and uniform. Still quite a bit rough, but it'll do. So here's the next major part, driving this auger, right? So I'm going to use this one inch shaft with a keyway in it, as well as this one inch bore bearing. I think one inches will be enough. Honestly, we'll just have to see when we get there, but it should be because most of the weight will be on the barrel itself and not really the bearing or the shaft. And I also have this one inch go-kart flange. I don't exactly remember what it's called, but they use it in go-karts and you pretty much just can screw this in, put the keyway in and then it can flange onto something. So my idea is to build a flange that will hook onto this, which then can hook onto the auger blade. So as you see, I'm gonna start off by building this flange here and I need to just measure the, um, not the diameter, but you know, just measure, take the dimensions of this little go-kart flange to build my own square flange. It actually came out to be a perfect four inches by four inches, which, you know, I'm not surprised because I didn't make that thing. You know, I just kind of measured what somebody else made. So of course it came out perfect, unlike my own things, right? Which come out like 4.9 by five or some stupid crap like that. But anyways, I cut this thing out uh, with the, the table saw, circular saw, skill saw, you know. Everybody likes to call it something different. I like to call it, I don't give a damn what it's called. Let me just call it what it is. You know what I'm saying? That's what I like to call it. But anyways, cut this first one out. And I'm going to make this thing two-ply just because these auger blades are really, really heavy. Um, easily at least 30 pounds. And I don't want any type of warping or distortion to happen um, at all at any point in this. So I'm going to make it two-ply, just weld two sheets together. I know that's never the same as if you just have thicker material to begin with, but this is better than just one ply, okay? So after I got both plates cut out, pretty self-explanatory, just laid some good beads down all four sides of them, you know, to get them nice and, and solid. So, you, there you go. You see I got it all nice and solid all the way around. Got down to ground to get around, you know, just to keep it nice and smooth around all the corners and all. No biggie. Now, I could have put this in a vise, but, you know, I just figured I'd just use my little, my little clamps for now. I know it's not the best practice here, but, you know, it is what it is. Then this is actually my best part, my favorite part, right? I bought this drill press because I've been drilling... The holes by hand in all previous reactors up to this point and it's been an absolute pain i did not want to do it this time around so i bought a, a drill press a little cheap one from ryobi and you see i marked the holes and we get to doing this and you know the best thing about a drill press is not only can you drill the holes so much easier but they're so much more precise than when you do it by hand 
You don't even need to use a center punch. So it's honestly brilliant. And this one comes with little lasers like it's in Star Wars or something. You know what I'm saying? It wants to be all futuristic and all. You know, and, and honestly, you don't need the lasers. But, you know, I just used it anyway. Because it's my first time doing it. So, you know, I'm, I'm a novice. I will admit. But you know what? You know what kind of pissed me off? My camera, right? Like, you see, it's not focusing. When I, every time I zoom my camera in, it doesn't want to bloody focus. And it's really annoying because it kind of makes it look like trash, even though it would have been a really nice shot. So I gotta go through the settings on my camera and see why it's doing that. Cause this is, this is not gonna do, mate. Cause you know, like this is not gonna be the last time I zoom into something, right? But anyways, you see these holes are drilled beautifully, consistently, and uniformly every time. You gotta love it. You love to see it, right? Put that little thread and oil on there. Keep it nice and cool and lubricate it up. You know how we do it. So you see, I got all four holes drilled. Wipe off all that little extra oil and grease. Save that for the bacon, right? But anyways, I put this on there. And I was actually quite surprised. It lines up perfectly. Perfectly. Look at that. Because, you know, I'm used to drilling holes by hole. I mean, what? I'm used to drilling holes by hand. And this just would not be the case. So what am I doing now? Well, what I'm doing now is I need to build a, a little platform for this flange to rest on. It's kind of hard to explain. I honestly have to just see it in my head and not even know what I was seeing. But you're going to see when we get there, okay? So it's basically a circle that's going to go on top of the auger, which then I can weld the flange onto and that will allow this all to be mounted together so you see I cut it out this is two ply again as well um, you know I like to make everything two ply when I'm doing something this heavy you know so then I just weld all this up on there well I've actually first start by tacking because usually when you do this type of welding if you don't tack it first the heat will warp it and make it distort and all get all funny doing wave dances and stuff like going up and down so it's best to like push up push it you know put a lot of pressure on it and tack it all the way around and then you get to welding so you can see here nice beautiful beautiful beads lay it all the way down completely penetrated all that good stuff she ain't going nowhere so now I just uh, I, I go ahead and measure all these lines for this flange because you're gonna see what we're gonna do you know I know you might be like well how the heck are we gonna put the screws in there if it's just a solid piece of metal well it's not a solid piece of metal you know why because let me get my two different gloves on here like Michael Jackson and we're about to cut this baby out that's right Put it out like we're in Star Wars or something. Darth Vader. Luke Skywalker. Look at that. Bow. So, you see, we got it out. And now you get the idea. You know, it was kind of hard for me to explain this to you just a couple seconds ago. That's why I told you to be patient and just watch the show. So now, got this on there. Weld this. You know, we've done this type of welding like a thousand times at this point, so I'm just going to speed it up completely. You don't even got to, you know, I'll spare you all the little details, okay? So we weld this on there. Make sure it's a nice, solid, penetrating welds all the way around because we don't want this thing ever coming off. So even the areas that had pretty large gaps, I filled in that gap. I didn't, I didn't spare not one spot. So after that, I had to drill the hole on the back of this barrel. Now... I know right now it looks like some type of crisscross toe Tetris puzzle thing. Looks really weird. Angry Birds, Candy Land crap. But that's because it was really hard to find the center of this barrel. I won't lie. Like, I had to do some sophisticated techniques, which I didn't record because, you know, when sometimes when I get in trouble doing these things, like when they give me a lot of issues, I kind of get pissed off and don't feel like recording it. So. I got the center of the barrel, fortunately, because, you know, you only really have one shot at doing this, right? You, you drill a hole wrong. It's kind of messed up, especially with this really thin material, but whatever. Got the center of it, drilled the holes. As you see, looks real good. Shaft goes in, shaft comes out. Now I'm going to go ahead and 
put these bolts and nuts on here, screw this flange in, and since those holes line up perfectly, this whole thing went perfectly, and you see, it's looking beautiful. So, really good to see that. So I put the shaft in, put the key in as well. Then I go ahead and I tighten down the uh, the actual, I don't know what you call that thing, the casing. Whatever, whatever um, screws those Allen little mounts into the shaft, I screw those down. And once I actually screw them down, I want to give it a little test because this thing really needs to grip on there. You know, no excuses. It's going to be under a lot of force, a lot of pressure. So I went to lift it up, you know, like I say, I say at least 30 pounds or so. So that was a pretty good sign. It, it held on pretty good. So after that, this was probably my least favorite part in this whole video, and probably the, my least favorite part in this whole construction. Getting this thing to line up with the hole in that barrel. Now, you won't be able to see this like I was seeing it, but you can only get this whole little auger disc in there so far before you can't see anything. You literally cannot see where it's going. You can only use your, your sound, your hearing, and what you feel. So what honestly, at some point it pissed me off so much, trying to go at this from all different angles, doing it in all positions, I was like, you know what, screw it. I'm just going to go cut out a little window in the thing so I can actually see. And that's what I did, so I could see where the hole was, and I was able to get it in there. I made the shaft longer as, as well, or I just got a longer piece of shaft. And here you go. Here's what we all been waiting for. Does it work? Does it spin? Yes, it does. Alright, it spins really well, you know, I'm not really going to say really good or anything, but this is really exciting to see because, um, of course, I don't even have the bearing on this thing, but it was just really cool to see that, okay, it really can work. And we're really getting there. I got to stretch out the auger again. It kind of got compressed. But other than that, we're going to mount the bearing on. We're going to do some other things to get this thing nice and polished up. And other than that, guys, take care. We'll see you on the next episode. And peace out.